I've used this Dapson DBS2100 Pro for the last year as my primary backup power source. However, things just got a lot better as they made this 2000L, which is about 20% lighter, weighs about 41 pounds, and if you go ahead and time this right, you can get this for under $600, but is it any good? So let's go ahead and find out. Hey everybody, welcome back to Random Fix. So I'm in the backyard here again, and I'm gonna be doing a review of this new 2000L with you guys. So I'm really gonna go ahead and put this to the test. I'm gonna show you guys what's included. We're gonna go do a load capacity test, and I'm gonna give you guys my final thoughts. And best of all, I'm gonna give this a Random Fix tool grade so you guys can go ahead and decide for yourself. And before we jump into all that, if you guys like this kind of content, make sure you guys give the video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button as well, as it really lets YouTube know that I'm bringing you guys valuable content. If you guys wanna learn more about power stations and the different uses, go ahead and comment down below and I'll do my best to go and point you guys in the right direction. And if you look behind me, I almost got this printer completed. I just gotta put the kitchen in. So if you guys wanna go and check out the van build on the Sprinter, I'll leave you guys a playlist down below. Now let's jump back into the review. So I got a solar panel set up here, it's 200 watt, and I got some testing equipment, computer, and I'll show you guys why I have this, because you should know it's very important that the power station can go ahead and basically supply enough power for modern computers through USB-C as it's really convenient and you don't have to carry around a charging brick. So let's go back to the story of this 2100 Pro. So I've been using this for the last year as my primary backup power source, as I mentioned. And as you guys can tell from all the dust, it's been really getting used. So I don't have to worry about my food spoiling and it's got a automatic transfer switch. So if the power goes out, it'll go ahead and kick in. I know this one is vetted and it's worked for the last year. Haven't had any issues. And Dapson is really about longevity, so they come with a five-year warranty, including the 2000L. Let's do a quick comparison of this unit versus that unit. As you can visually see, there's some minor differences. So the very first thing is gonna be the display here. You can see it's mounted on the long face. Over here on the 2000L, it's gonna be mounted on the side, which is actually a little more convenient for certain times, such as van builds as you don't wanna go ahead and store the unit like this, it's much easier to go ahead and point this out the back and monitor it. And yes, both of these do have app support and the app on the Dapson units is amazing. And we'll take a look at the app a little bit later on. So you can see both of the units are registered here on my account. And on the very front of this, we can see we have a total of six power ports. Three of them are gonna be grounded. Three of them are ungrounded. There's a power button. And the very first thing I don't like about the power button is I can't tell on the display if the plugs are on except for this little tiny square. You really got to look at it. It's right there. So this one right here had the plugs on the side. And if you notice, this had a total of three grounded plugs. And this had this big old 30 amp connection. But just because you use the 30 amp connection didn't mean you can get more power out of it. It also had the option to go and expand so you could double your capacity. The 2000L does not have that. It's a little bit more simplified. So I think for basic home backup power and apartment use, this is amazing. And let's go ahead and quickly take a look at the side. So on this side, there's nothing. And if you guys notice, we got two nice strong handles. This has some sort of Allen key, so you can maybe service it, but it isn't gonna be a plastic case. Let's quickly take a look at the back. And on the back, we have two connections. One is gonna be for the solar, and the solar input on this is gonna be a maximum of 800 watts. This previous unit right here, the 2100 Pro, is gonna be 1200 watts. And I gotta tell you guys, 800 watts is more than enough. And there's some really good information here. So on the solar input, make sure your solar voltage does not exceed 60 volts. One other thing that I really like about the Dapson unit is gonna be these QR codes. So they actually have the QR code right here. So you can contact them via WhatsApp and download the apps right away. 
and you don't have to go fumbling through the app store or the Android market and that is really nice. Now let's talk about portability. Can I go ahead and transport this with one arm? Let's find out. So one arm carry. I think that is a check. So this is the unit here. Really simple design. And before we talk about all the different ports, let's quickly talk about what's included. So this is what's included in the box. We get a standard computer charging cable. And these are my favorite connections because they're really easy to replace. If I lose it, I can pay three bucks and get another one. Additionally, a 2000L can charge ultra fast. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that. So I like to charge slow as I think it helps increase the lifespan of the unit. So I normally charge between four to 600 watts and that does the job pretty well. We also get a car charger and this car charger right here can go and charge at about 120 watts max. So if you need this fully charged because the capacity on this is gonna be 2,048 watt hours, it's gonna take you quite a while. And then we get the owner's manual. In case I'm camping and I have a problem or something, I can quickly troubleshoot it. Now let's talk about the different ports on the unit. So first thing is first, we got all the DC ports up top. So if you hit this button right here, there's gonna be those little icons that pop up. And the very first one right here is gonna be a car port. This is regulated at 10 amps. Then we have a 5521 barrel connector. And I'll leave a link for these connectors. They're very affordable and you can make them yourself and basically wire up LED lights or different components very easily. We have USB-C. And this right here is rated at 100 watts USB-C. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this to the test on my gaming laptop. We have a power delivery port rated at 30 amps. And we have two USB-A connection, three amps max. Then there's gonna be this flashlight. And the flashlight has three different modes. There's the SOS coming up right there. And I guess that can be useful if you're broken down on the side of the road or lost in the wilderness. That will get you some attention. And then down here, we have the AC ports. So the AC ports are rated at 2100 watts output, and that's the combined output of all of these ports together. So you can go ahead and plug a heat gun into here. That's rated at 1500 watts. And a smaller heater in this one right here that's rated at 400 watts and you'll be at 1900 watts. Normally, the limit of household electricity is gonna be about 1800 watts. So I really don't think this is a unit to go ahead and crank up to 2200 watts as it does the job and we're gonna go ahead and test it. Here's the power button to turn on the ports. And there is about a one, two, three. There's a three second delay before the ports do turn on. If you notice, these right here are gonna be slotted. So these are rated at up to 20 amps. Now let's go ahead and test the output of this 100 watt USB-C. Now let's test the USB-C power delivery port and see if we can actually power up a gaming laptop. And one thing I wanted to note here is you can use the device as it's charging. So currently I'm charging it via solar and it's outputting about 49 watts, 66 watts to the laptop, 90 watts going out to the laptop, 96. And as you can see, it is charging the laptop and this does have a gaming graphics card. So no issues, works flawlessly and no need to carry around the big adapter that's included with the laptop, as I can just use the power off that. Even though it shows 100%, it still has a little bit more room. So I'm gonna let this finish topping off. And today we have a little bit of a cloudy day. The sun is right behind those clouds right there. And even on days like this, you can easily get a solar panel and I was just getting about 110 watts and 90 watts using this small solar panel. And I even have it pointed in the wrong direction. So the sun 
is up there and I'm facing it this way and it still works so small solar panels with the 2000L work flawlessly now this unit is super intelligent I plugged it into AC power and I also have it plugged into the solar what it does it prioritizes solar so as the solar decreases it will increase the AC wattage this does have a really nice feature called EMS. Basically it acts like a UPS. And so if I have something plugged in, plug something in there and a light bulb so you guys can actually see it. So right now the unit is running off the AC power. I'm gonna turn on the heat gun. And currently the heat gun is taking about 962 watts. Now let's go ahead and test the EMS. So everything is running. Let's unplug it from the wall and pay attention to the light bulb. If you notice, it blinked for a fraction of a second and everything keeps going. And now I'm fast charging the unit. So I got a thousand watts coming in from the AC and 22 from solar. One thing I did want to mention is when this heat gun is on the second setting, it normally takes about 1500 watts or close to it. When I turn it on, while it's plugged into the AC power, for some reason or another, it's being limited. If you notice right there, it's at 921 watts. When I disconnect it, look at the wattage. This is the normal wattage. It'll be updated in a second, about 1500 watts, 1455. So I don't know if I have some certain feature on or off, but that is definitely not supposed to be limited when it's on AC power. It seems like it's almost backwards. I'm gonna plug it back in. You can hear the heat gun. It actually sounds different. back to 928 watts. Anyway, I'll play around with it, see if I made a mistake somewhere in the settings, and I'll keep you guys posted towards the end. Let's talk about the app here. So the app has a really nice flow. It has two different views, which I'll show you guys. So this is the main screen, and this is one of the best apps I have actually found for sharing. And Let's click on the 2000L here. We can go down, basically we could turn the AC plugs on and off, DC plugs, the light, and we can go through the different modes. If you click right here, this is where you can go through and change some of the advanced settings. And this is the only device that I've actually tried that has some of these nice features such as this energy management, but you can set that you don't want the device to charge over 50% or down below 5% or 10% and this will increase the lifespan of the unit. Since this is rated at 4000 cycles, if you go and decrease these, you'll get even more use out of this. And this has a semi-solid state lithium iron phosphate battery, which is honestly the best battery technology. And then we have the energy save mode. For more updates, you guys will notice I have the newest updates installed. And device sharing, again, this is really easy to go ahead and share with others. You can just put in their email address and they'll get a notification and they can access the device as well. There's a other section here and this is where you can choose between the two different views. and a device log. So if you encounter any kind of issue, you can upload the log to them. I actually uploaded the log earlier because I don't think that this device should be getting limited power when it's on full throttle, especially when it's plugged into the wall. But when it's running off battery, it's running just the way it's supposed to. Okay, so we are fully charged up. I'm gonna turn on the AC ports. Unplug it from solar and from the wall. 
And now I'm just gonna let this guy run. Okay, so we're down to 81%. And currently we're almost at 0.4 kWh, or kilowatt hour. So that battery is down to zero. And there's gonna be the 2000L. Look at that, we got 1.993. That is actually really high as far as efficiency. So I'm gonna go ahead and display what the efficiency percentage is. Back when I first started testing power stations, they were in the 70, then they went to the 80% range. And now you can see that we have power stations that are 90% efficient. So this is amazing. Now I'm gonna go and just let this charge up. And again, I can charge it via solar, via the car charger or the wall. And I can adjust everything on the app. And the app makes everything super easy. If you guys are enjoying the video, make sure you guys give the video a thumbs up as I'm about to jump into random fix tool grade so you guys can decide for yourself. I do put a lot of time and effort into the videos and I will keep you guys updated as far as that glitch towards the end of the video to see if I can actually find a workaround where the power is actually dropping when it's plugged into the wall when that shouldn't be happening. It seems like it's some sort of power boost mode, but it's completely opposite of what we want. We want it to be on, if ever, when the battery is being used and this is actually turning on when it's plugged into household power. Let's go ahead and jump into the random fix tool grade and I do want to mention that just like the previous Dapson unit they did send me this and as always guys I keep my reviews honest just so you guys know exactly what you're getting and Dapson can actually improve the product as there's no such thing as a perfect product. Everything is going to eventually get fixed. I don't like the side mounted display. I know it's probably cheaper to build it can make sense in a very tunnel-ish build you're going to be using for backup power or for maybe a camper build but i like the sideways display better additionally they could have just moved everything to one side so right now we have all the ports right here and on the back we have the solar and also the charging port they honestly could have moved it over here that way I'm not moving around the power station. Everything's at the front. It would have made things easy. Uh, or they could have just built it on the side right here. So it would have made the setup a little bit better. As far as things that I like about this guys, this particular unit at the $594, I'm about to show you guys, is gonna be at under 30 cents per uh, watt hour. And that is honestly the best price I've ever seen. If you guys check the links down below, there'll be a special coupon code where you have to purchase it straight from Dapson and they'll give you the special price of $5.94. Now, if you wait till the Amazon Prime Day, you could probably still snag it and I'll leave you guys that link too. And the dates for that, I think are gonna be from the 8th of July to the 14th of July, 2025. If you're watching this in the future and it's still on sale, please let me know down below because at $5.94, this is an incredible deal. So with all that said, I'm going to display the random fix tool grade here. And I'm going to give this a 91 out of 100. And the real benefit of this is really the price per kilowatt hour. It's over 2,000 watt hours. Most of the times you're going to get 1,100, 1,500 watt hours for this price. Now you're getting 2,000 watt hours. And I hope they actually fix that little glitch that I'm going to go and report to them about. And if they did that, I was originally going to go and score this as a 94 because it checked off all the boxes for the price range. Anyway, I really appreciate you guys watching and let me know if you guys have any questions and I'll leave you guys a link for the Sprinter build. If you guys wanna check that out, I have a pretty crazy power station in there. It's got about 13,000 watt hours and I'll leave you guys a link for that as well. Thank you so much guys. As always, make it a great day and we'll see you on the next one.